Today, we are manufacturing a walnut end grain cutting board with unique brass feet that adds elegance to the standard rubber bumpers you usually find with other boards on the market. If I can take a minute to let you know about some offers we have available. Firstly for woodworkers, if you head to the description, there's a link for 15% off tools and machinery with Axminster. Also, for those who are interested in selling online, the easiest way to get started is by using Shopify. You don't need technical expertise in coding to get up and running. Just pick a free or paid theme and start adding content. If you get stuck, you can contact Live Support or request a call back from customer services. As of the date of recording, they have a fantastic offer that can be redeemed by scanning the QR code and clicking the link. It was late in the day and I should have really have used the thickness up, but it needed recalibrating after moving it around the workshop, which could have taken anywhere between 20 to 50 minutes to do. So I just popped the pieces, strips of wood through the drum sander instead.
At the gluing up stage, it's important to make sure each piece of neighbouring wood has alternating grain patterns. This is important to prevent the board from warping. If the chopping board is well made and looked after, you can expect these boards to last a good 5-10 to 10 years, maybe more. Another benefit of paying close attention to the grain direction at this stage is to ensure you get a repeated geometric pattern that flows throughout the cutting board. Design considerations. By adding the brass feet and elevating the cutting board off the work surface, we are able to negate the need to add routed slots to the side of the board to aid picking up. Instead, the elevated board provides a gap to slide fingers underneath. Also, the elevated board won't sit in moisture. Kitchen worktops get wet and inevitably a cutting board that isn't elevated will sit in and suck up moisture which is bad for the cutting board and will warp the wood. Along with not having to router out handle slots, we decided not to router in juice grooves. Common consensus says juice grooves should be added. We disagree. We prefer to have as much cutting surface area as possible, unimpeded by annoying grooves that make moving prepped fruit and veg from cutting board to bowl cumbersome. Secondly, it's our opinion that meat should be cut on a designated meat board, preferably silicon or plastic. Wood doesn't get on well with quick and sudden temperature changes, and by cutting a piping hot joint on your primary end grain cutting board, you increase the risk of damaging your board and warping it. We recommend instead the primary large wooden board is heavy and doesn't move around, a nice sturdy solid base. A designated meat board and a similar smaller plastic lightweight and portable board for moving prepped food from one place to another.
There is a point of diminishing returns when it comes to sanding. We sand up to 240 grit and we think anything over that is um, overkill. You can't really feel it um, to touch when you move your hand across the board. Instead of rounding the corners with a chamfer bit, we prefer to hand sand a faint 45 degree fillet to all sides and edges. To finish we add a base coat of mineral oil and leave overnight. Once dry we apply board conditioner. To maintain an end grain cutting board you should apply board conditioner every 3-4 to four weeks or before you think it's about to start drying out. There's no hard and fast rule here, it depends how much use you get out of your cutting board. This is a cool little jig for accurately drilling the feet screw holes in the right place every time. It's comprised of two component pieces, the referencing template and the drill locator disc. Jigs take time to make and by using the drill over and over, the hole where you drill will enlarge over time. Instead of having to make a new jig, all I have to do instead is head over to the drawer cabinet and pick out another locator disc and replace it with the old one. I can 3D print as many of these discs as I want and within minutes per unit. Here's the big reveal. A rubber bumper sits inside the brass foot and the pattern engraved into the brass is the Oob House logo. The low profile feet offer a nice shadow detail onto the worktop and the faint 45 degree fillet nicely finishes off the board. That's the end of this upload, you might want to consider watching the Magnetic Knife Strip video partnering this as part of the Food Prep Best Accessories. Please consider subscribing and sharing if you can and I hope to see you the next time we post.